I'm sorry, but we have Carrie Sullivan's back at my work. I'm freaking out. I need to get a copy tomorrow. I'm going to read my most anticipated releases this week. Oh my God. That's right. I have Carrie Soto three days before the publication date. I think that this was literally one of my most anticipated releases. Maybe even the most anticipated one. I'll share my thoughts and opinions once I have read more. <laughs> you some of my opinions on Carrie Soto. Where do I put you down? Ooh, that's a vibe in the background. Okay, let me grab the book. By the way, I think this is the most ugly cover I've ever seen in my life. Like, I don't like it <laughs> at all, but I cannot get a hold of like the different, like the US edition, which I also don't love, but I think it's better than this one. That's besides the point. Okay, I'm currently on page 115, like about one third of the way through. But let me talk about the first part of the story, which is called the first time round. So you get to know Carrie Soto. And basically, I don't know if I told you guys what this is kind of about, but Carrie Soto is one of the best tennis players of her time. She has won like 30 Grand Slam titles. She has set the record until Nikki Chan, who is like tying right now with her record. Whilst Carrie Soto has been in retirement for over five years, but she is like so extremely determined and she doesn't want to give away her record to Nikki. Like, nah, -uh, girl, you're trying, but no. Carrie Soto is coming back out of retirement. And with like the first part of this book, so the first time around, you get to know how she kind of got like into playing tennis. You also see her relationship with her father who has been coaching her since she was super, super young. And you kind of get to you know how their dynamic is and basically how ruthless our main character Carrie is. By the way, I would have never picked up this book if it wasn't for the fact that Taylor Jenkins Reid wrote it. She's one of my favorite authors. I adore Evelyn Hugo, Daisy Jones, Malibu Rising, really love that. Also quite enjoyed One True Loves, but like I said, would never pick this up without it being this author. So until so far, the plot is okay. I do like the writing style. It's just very typical Taylor Jenkins read. I don't know how to explain it. I just get like sucked into the story despite the subject matter, not much happening until so far. And it's not per se that I had like super high expectations. Like, of course, I'm hoping that I'm gonna love this freaking story. But on the one hand, I am just one third of the way through. But then on the other hand, I am already one third of the way through. So I'm kind of like wishing it'll get better. You also get little snippets in between of like newspapers, transcripts, of things that happen on TV talking about how Carrie Soto is as a person, what they're thinking of her comeback. So you really get to see her fame and the toll that her fame probably takes on her. But I feel like that's going to be a subject that we'll be exploring further on into the book. So let me read some more and see how it goes. Hopefully a little better than it is doing right now. Oh, I don't know what Carrie Soto is doing to me but it's making me want to run and I haven't done this in eight years. I never go to the gym. Ugh. I don't know why I'm doing this. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to my new crib. Me and my sister moved internally and now I have like internally in our parents' home. That sounded a bit strange, didn't it? Besides the point, I have a new home and these are gonna be my new bookshelves. I'm gonna film my bookshelf reorganization tomorrow, so. I'm very excited to see what that looks like. If I have uploaded it, I will leave a link somewhere here on the screen. But I read more in Carrie Soto. Until so far, it's not what I wished it was. <laughs> Today, I actually watched episode two of House of the Dragon together with Brit. I'm really enjoying that show. That show is like building up to something epic, hopefully. I have good hope towards that, but I'm having less much hope regarding Carrie Soto. <laughs> 
So I am two thirds of the way through right now and I feel kind of like solid in my opinion and I'm a bit afraid that it's not gonna change that much. At the point in the story where I am right now, Carrie Soto is trying to like make a big return towards her like tennis career and she basically wants to win one of the four grand slams. I don't watch tennis like I said, so I think you have like Paris, London, Australia and another place the u.s open and those four are like the big big tennis games and she really wants to win at least one of those so i am in the middle of the 1995 french open and before this one i read the australian open what were my notes again okay so up until the australian open part of this book my thoughts on carrie soda as like a main character is that she is very very blunt and very ruthless. She does not keep her thoughts to herself. Like I do appreciate honesty and I think a lot of foreigners actually think that Dutch people are very honest. But Carrie Soto is like Dutch times 200. She's also known as like the bitch, which also really brings up a really great discussion in this book. When you have like fierce and strong women, they are often seen as bitches. And that's definitely like an image that Carrie Soto has to like fight against or that she has to struggle with and that she's known for. So I really like that exploration of like women being honest and then being called a freaking bitch. But in Carrie Soto's case, she definitely has some struggles, <laughs> which definitely make her very cut off towards people or like, how do I word that correctly? She has built such a huge wall around herself, around her heart, which makes it very difficult for people to get into like her personal space and to really get to know her while well, even though they have the best of intentions. There is like a potential love interest in this one, which she is not letting into her heart and soul. Soul. I think one of her managers is actually like trying to be a nice person and maybe like having a personal relation with Carrie Soto as like a friend too. But Carrie just like bites off certain remarks that this like agent makes. And, and instead of it just being like a question to get to know Carrie better, Carrie turns it around and makes it as if the other person has a personal problem with the thing that they just asked. Am I making any sense? Like she is going through stuff and she doesn't know it herself, I feel like, which I find kind of frustrating because I personally am an open book and sometimes maybe a little bit of an oversharer. So I'm having a little bit of a struggle with our main character in that way. And 230 pages in, the plot is so monotonous. I don't know if my pronunciation in English is good when I say it like that, but it's very, very much the same over and over again. It's very repetitive and I'm kind of bored out of my mind, to be honest. It's just Carrie going to practice. It's her being very, very secure or like arrogant about herself going to practice again, being kind of like mean and offish towards others, going to practice a game, a match. It's a little bit boring. And I just expected the story to be a lot more personal relationship focused until so far, because that is what I have usually found with her novels. But I feel like it's a lot about tennis until so far and not really about maybe personal development, character development. But I do feel like there are some twists and turns coming Carrie Soto's way. I feel like someone close to her, this is a prediction, someone close to her is gonna get like hurt. And unfortunately, that event will probably force her kind of to open up her heart towards someone else. That's my prediction for the story. Despite all the critiques that I have, I still want to continue on with the book and read it more. So I guess that's a good thing. But besides that, definitely not blown away. So I finished reading Carrie Soto is Back, aka my most anticipated release of 2022. And boy, am I disappointed. <laughs> that a lot of people would enjoy this book, but I also feel like a lot of people will have the same reaction as I do, as how I feel. If like this is the timeline of the book, then it is exactly this how I would describe it. The first 80 pages are kind of like an introduction to Carrie Soto as a character and her father and kind of like her backstory, how she came into playing tennis and kind of became the person who she is at the start of this book, in the now, in the present timeline. Then the middle part is 200 pages 
worth of her coming out of retirement to try and attempt to beat Nikki Chan, who is coming for her world record. And during those 200 pages, you kind of like follow her training again, going to all of these big matches, going into like the different Grand Slam playoffs. And it is very, very repetitive in my opinion, very much the same throughout those 200 pages. And it really quite bored me. There is not a lot of personal growth for Carrie. She is super stubborn. She is very blunt and she doesn't really care what they think of her, which is good on one side, but then also not very considerate on the other side. I do admire some aspects of her as a person. She's just like a very, very flawed character, which is very classic Taylor Jenkins read, and I did quite enjoy that. But like I said, those 200 pages, no. And 200 out of the 360 pages is a lot. <laughs> and then the last 80 pages, I feel like you get, again, that classic Taylor Jenkins read, emotional damage story. <laughs> and it's basically just the beginning at the end that I really quite enjoyed and felt like was the part that I was anticipating the most of this book, but it's just so little. Like, I don't feel like I can completely blame the book and the execution of it, but then I also think like, yes. I mean, I knew it was a tennis book and I don't prefer reading about sports in books, but I was just expecting that Taylor Jenkins Reid was gonna write a bit more of plot <laughs> besides the tennis than it actually had. So honestly, if you're a Taylor Jenkins Reid fan, I still think you would like to try and give this book a go because like I said, I feel like a lot of people will like it. I think a lot of people will also have the same mixed feelings as I do, but it's not like a bad book at all. It's just not as good as I wanted it to be. <laughs> And I know that a lot of people are, for instance, also not a huge fan of Malibu Rising, but I did quite enjoy that book. It has a lot more backstory with the characters in that one, and I feel like this was pretty much all about tennis <laughs> and not a lot of character development. Like I said, the last 80 pages are, but I feel like it's just a lot of character development in like a too little amount of pages. I just wanted more, and I wanted a bit more closure at the end. And I don't really want to say anything more because I don't want to like spoil the plot because there is just not a lot. And I feel like the plot that is happening in this book, you need to experience it yourself and make up your mind about what you think of Carrie Soto. It is definitely my least favorite Taylor Jenkins read book that I've read until so far. I'm sorry. <laughs> I did fly through it. I had an enjoyable time, but to be honest, I'm a little bit glad that I get to pick up a different book, which is not how I wanted to come out of this reading experience. So I think on Goodreads, I will give this one a three out of five stars, but there are still just like some classical Taylor Jenkins read elements in this book that I just really enjoy and I really appreciate how she does it. So I would probably give it a three and a half out of five stars. So yeah, I mean, happy publication date to Carrie Soto at the time that I'm filming this. Let me know in the comments down below if you have already picked up this book or if you're gonna pick it up after watching my video or if you're just like completely put off, but maybe your expectations will be lowered a little bit and that might help, I think. <laughs> and also I'm just really curious what your opinion is if you have read this book do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments down below. We can have a nice like little discussion about this book. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or in the button down below. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. <laughs>